Are we losing our bees and pollinators? How have the number of pollinators changed in the last 25 years? And do you know why? And why does this matter? I'm going to pass. To... I'm happy to talk on that because there's a word, insectageddon. And what we're seeing is a incredible ecological crash of insects that includes bees and other pollinators of which pesticides have a major role but I'd also very much like to echo what Julian and Stephanie have said that endocrine disruptors are very important because what we're doing is disrupting the reproduction of the whole of our ecosystems because nearly everything on this planet uses the same um, basic hormones, estrogen and testosterone for reproduction. There's only a few exceptions. And these chemicals are affecting the whole of our you know, biome on this planet. Includes insects, which are really a really important part of the food chain. So what we're seeing a whole crash in birds and frogs, reptiles and so on. And you know, we'll see a crash in us because we're the top of that food chain. And we have made this insect to get, get them. Yeah, I, I'd like to follow on from there. Uh, according to WWF and people who study these things, there's basically been a 70% reduction in the number of large animals and birds and fish on the face of this planet since the mid 1970s. And insects too have crashed. And if insects crash, bird numbers go down, reptile numbers go down, everything that eats insects disappears as well. So, you know, we've set off a, a phase of extinction, which is currently running, and get this, it's currently running three times faster than the extinction episode when the dinosaurs were taken out. Okay, it, it, it's phenomenal, the rate of destruction, the havoc that humans are wreaking on wildlife. Even, you know, in the most remote corners of the planet, you can, you, at the bottom of the oceans, top of Mount Everest, uh, the remotest atolls in the Pacific Ocean, you can find animals that are contaminated with human industrial chemicals. These things have spread all around the planet. The snow of Antarctica is contaminated. The snow on Mount Everest is contaminated. So it is, it is the spread of these things. And of course, people who live in, in, in centers of population are particularly contaminated. The air they breathe, the, the place they live, the food they eat, all of it is contaminated. Every moment of the day, every one of us is getting these things. So we, we need to understand the scale of this disaster that we have unleashed. And it is five times larger than the climate disaster that we have unleashed in terms of the volume of stuff that we're pumping into the biosphere and killing things with, it's five times larger. And just to bring that home to us, we're killing, according to the World Health Organization, 12.6 million people every single year through chemical poisoning of one sort or another. Okay, now that is a rate of preventable homicide, which is double the death toll in World War II. This is the worst case of preventable homicide in Earth's history. You know, and, and people are just not aware and governments are permitting and enabling it. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, uh, unless we do something about it, you know, unless we speak out, uh, basically it's gonna keep on going forever. Um, I have a lot to say about the bees, and I wrote about it in the book. There's actually uh, articles uh, that have shown glyphosate disrupting the bees' uh, gut microbiome, causing them to uh, not nurture the, the young bees properly in the in the uh, um, in the uh, honeycomb, the uh, beehive. Sorry, I lost that word. And um, going out and getting uh, lost and not being able to come back, you know, when they're left loose to try to fertilize the crops um, because they're getting essentially bee Alzheimer's. I think that um, chlorpyrifos has been identified as a, as a suspect in killing off the bees. I think glyphosate is at least as, as powerful as chlorpyrifos and it's um, working synergistically with the insecticides because glyphosate disrupts the enzymes in the liver that detoxify the, the toxic insecticides. So they're working collaboratively to, to destroy the bees. And I remember there was a paper on honey and the levels of glyphosate in honey. And they, they looked at all kinds of different samples of honey from countries, Mexico, United States, Canada, um, found glyphosate in almost every sample they looked at and found the highest levels consistently in the samples from the United States. 
So honey has, is contaminated because the bees are being exposed and it's killing the bees. And we're gonna have a really big crisis once we don't have our pollinators with the food problem. Actually, uh, also uh, an EPA whistleblower has said that the real reason why we are, we are instructed not to give honey to infants is not because of some, the bacteria in there, it's because of the contamination and the toxic chemicals that make the young body vulnerable to infection, botulism, and, and you know, very strong infections. So it's really that contamination in honey that becomes the hazard for infants, not any actual organism. That's a good point. In fact, I think a lot of the foods that would normally be very healthy are no longer healthy because of the chemicals that are in them. The fish with the uh, mercury and um, liver, you know, liver is a very healthy food, but it's so full of toxins that it, the liver is not edible anymore. The liver from the cow, for example, they don't even sell it. It probably looks terrible. It's probably got fatty liver disease. And it's very sad that these highly nutritious foods are not, uh, are not really safe anymore. Mm -hmm. Ronnie? Yeah, I'll just second what everyone has said. We raise bees here on this farm. We have 27 hives and we try to teach <clears throat> the school kids who come here every day to visit uh, about the importance of bees and pollinators and including bats who are the main pollinators for the agave plants that are so important to us. I remember talking to Dr. Don Huber and at the time, neonicotinoid insecticides were being implicated for colony collapse disorder. He said, when you look at the symptoms of the bees, it doesn't make sense because there are certain aspects that could not be explained by the neonicotinoids, but can be explained by glyphosate. They die of starvation, but there's plenty of bee bread around. And so he said, it's, they need the lactobacillus in their gut to digest and that's easily killed by the glyphosate. So that was one of the examples. They also said that under environmentally um, relevant conditions, the amount of glyphosate that we would find in agricultural areas, a, a study showed 30 something percent death rate in these hives just exposed to glyphosate. One company was studying this called Biologics, and then they, that Biologics company got purchased by Monsanto and stopped studying it. Hmm. Could I add something there? That, that basically, uh, you know, it's not individual chemicals that are doing this. It is the whole bloody mixture. It is the 350,000 chemicals hmm. that are being produced industrially worldwide at the moment. Uh, and as I say, that we're inhaling them with every breath. We're, we're swallowing them with, we're ingesting them with every drink and, and every meal. And we're surrounded by them in our homes and our workplaces and elsewhere. And it, it, it is these chemicals and the daughter products that, that, that they engender. These chemicals, once they're, they're unleashed in the environment, they don't just go away. They, they interact with one another and produce new generations of chemicals that we've never seen before. They're, they're out there, you know, reacting with natural things and reacting with unnatural things. So it, it's the overall bath, and the science has got very little information at the moment on the problem of mixtures, because it's the mixtures that really are starting to hit us. Tens of thousands of chemicals every single day. Uh, you know, it, the whole thing, everybody focuses on the one chemical, you know, which has got these properties and those properties, and if we have it at a small enough dose level, nobody's going to get hurt. That's absolute rubbish because that chemical is going to interact with a lot of similar chemicals that have exactly the same effect on your liver or your brain. So it's going to multiply the effect of those chemicals on you. People don't seem to understand that this is the issue. It's the chemical bath that we're in that, that is really affecting us. I agree with you. And our bodies are really set up with a, we're redundant. We have so many redundancies and that's really the reason why we're still alive really and with all the environmental pollution we have in addition to chemical pollution there's the emf pollution that we've introduced and that's that's on my mind because there are studies of bees and how they respond to just being exposed to a cell phone and as somebody who's chemically sensitive and, and i'm chemically sensitive because i have a chemical injury i'm also uh sensitive to wireless technologies i'm using an ether landline to connect with you today but it's those, it's, we have an onslaught of environmental pollution. And if we start to remove this onslaught, 
then our bodies can start to heal and our environment can start to heal and our ecosystems can start to heal. Mm -hmm.